Two years before starting this YouTube channel, I didn't have a car, I didn't have any money, didn't have any friends or family, and I was full of depression, anxiety, and anything else you can think of. Sleepless nights, overthinking. My dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and given four months to live. Um, I had to look after him and he died holding my hand and uh, that was the hardest time in my life. My mum had already passed 10 years earlier um, so now I'd lost both parents. So after taking that time out looking after my dad, my marriage suffered and it was on the rocks anyway. So, there goes the marriage. And um, I had to move out by myself. And I became quite lonely. And didn't want to reach out to anybody because everything was going wrong. And it didn't end there. Once I'd moved out, I found a place and the landlord began to take liberties. He wanted more and more money of me, of which I couldn't afford. And so decided to use his key whenever he wanted. He opened the door, he'd come in um, and demand money. I was worried that he had friends that would smash the door down. So I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't sleep at night anyway. And and then I sunk deeper, deeper than I'd ever been in my whole life. I began drinking, trying to help myself sleep and to stop the overthinking. And whilst I was doing that, I was literally messing my whole life up because I didn't have a penny in my bank account at all. No food in the fridge, nothing in the cupboard. I was literally surviving on water. So as the days went on and uh, the days turned into weeks, it got worse and worse and worse. I think it got to about three months of this, two hours a night sleeping. And I think it took about three months for me to actually ask for help. And in the meantime, I'm crying inside for whatever reason. So I went to the doctors and he prescribed me antidepressants and sleeping tablets. Neither of which worked for me. That's not to say they won't work for you. I'm just telling my story. And I was at my wits end. I, I, I couldn't think straight. I was on my own. I was doing everything by myself or literally nothing by myself, except overthinking. I even thought about ending it three times in a very specific way. And I'm glad I didn't. So I think I got to the, about the third time where I seriously considered ending it. And I started phoning up the Samaritans. It's a free telephone call center in the UK where you can call someone and they'll listen to your problems, but they can't give you an answer. They can't tell you what to do. So I found that it was a relief, but I also found it frustrating because I didn't know what to do. Inside, I had questions and nobody was answering them. I was expecting some help and I wasn't getting that. So I went back to the doctors and he gave me someone to talk to in person. And they just sat there, just like the Samaritan, not knocking the Samaritans at all. They do a fantastic job and it did help. It did alleviate those uh, thoughts. And 
again, I come away thinking, what am I even doing? You're just sitting there. You're not telling me what to do. And I thought, the only person that can help me is me. I'd already watched every Les Brown and Tony Robbins video, and nothing worked for me. I, nothing was giving me inspiration. So, on one of my binge drinking days, 12 p.m. in the afternoon, if you can call it the afternoon, I put some music on and um, kind of danced. And then I fell over. I landed on the floor and I knelt down on the floor and I'm thinking, wow, this isn't you. This isn't the person I see inside. And something needs to change. So, I think there's about four or five bottles left of whiskey, vodka, <laughs> you name it, it was there. And I just chucked it down the sink and really did some research into what makes people feel better. And I think I came across a news article on YouTube about a news presenter who had an anxiety attack on live TV and he was saying about meditation. I'm thinking, that is the last thing I want to do. <laughs> and, you know, because it's got its own bias, it's got its own stigma, but I thought I'd give it a try. And I think I waited until about nine o'clock at night where I was really tired, and I put on a Jason Stevenson guided meditation. So I closed my eyes, tried to immerse myself as much as possible, and the next minute I knew, it was seven o'clock in the morning. I slept for nine to 10 hours that night, and I woke up, I think it was at seven o'clock in the morning, and I felt great. I felt fantastic, but I also thought to myself, ah, this is a fluke. I was so tired that I needed to sleep. So I tried it the next night, and again, I think I slept the same amount of time. And over the weeks, I think I, I then came down to about five, six hours of sleep, which is normal for me. My sleep was better, my focus was better, and who I was was coming back. At the time I was working at home and I had a, a telephone job. And I was working all the hours I could um, to build myself back up. And my bank balance regenerated. Um, I began to be present automatically. I didn't have to really think about it. So it's all on a kind of like subconscious level through these meditations. I began to make better choices for myself, um, look out for myself more, and only slept because I needed to sleep. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't like, get that tired that I needed to sleep. I had so many ideas on how I could live my life better instead of life living me, if that makes sense. I suppose the next step was, how did I end up here? With a, a YouTube channel with 100,000 subscribers. And that came from the telephone job I had. And the, the person I was talking to said, I had a voice for guided meditation. I, I, which I found quite weird because I'd only began to start um, listening to guided meditation. So as, as soon as I put the phone down from that person, I instantly began to write my first meditation, which was the first one on YouTube. And unbeknownst to my knowledge, the first of many. And on writing that, voicing it, uploading it, I then wrote another. I made them in the hope that it wouldn't take so long for someone else to realize that life is a state of mind to a certain extent. I woke up one morning and 
found that they had gained a lot of views. So I began writing more meditations and I was, you know, as quickly as I was thinking about them, they were being shoveled out to my channel. People started to watch them, people started to subscribe and uploading became a regular thing. Knowing that I could potentially be helping someone from my own experience is a meditation in itself. And even to this day, I don't forget those hard days. I do try to respond to every comment. And if I can't, then you have my every gratitude in every video I make. So here we are. 100,000 subscriber milestone. 100,000 people. Wherever you are in life at the moment, ponder over what is important to you. And when you find it, that's where your fire, determination and focus comes from. I just want to say in this video that I think everybody should live their life in the best way through passing their own milestones, setting goals. And that's where you see improvement, even if they are tiny baby steps. It's progression. So what I want to say is a massive, 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 massive thank you to all of you. You're amazing. Every single one of you. Thank you.